If you're playing Pokemon for the first time with the release of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, or you've been away from Pokemon for a minute, then this is the video for you. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are remakes of the original Gen 4 Pokemon games with some modern quality of life tweaks and enhancements. So here we've got 14 solid tips for those of you just starting out your new Pokemon journey. Hit that like button, sub to the channel, and say something nice to me in the comments. Let's go. The classic tradition of choosing from among a fire, water, or grass starter is back once again in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but the types of gyms that you're going to face have a big impact on your selection. If you want a much easier time, choose Chimchar. Seriously, choose the cute fire monkey. This Pokemon's combination of fire and fighting type moves will remain useful throughout almost the entire game, with only a few exceptions when you're faced with water-based area, which an early game Shinx will easily solve. Piplup and Turtwig will evolve into interesting type combinations, with Piplup's Empoleon being a water-steel type and Turtwig's Torterra being a grass ground, but they are fairly evenly matched in terms of trying to give yourself an extra challenge. Any one of these starters though will have their usefulness and advantages, of course, and if you prefer the look or style of a particular starter, by all means follow your instincts. But if you want to essentially play Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl on easy mode, then trust me, choose Chimchar. Once upon a time, Mew was among the most rare of all Pokemon, only available through special giveaways or nefarious game cheats. Nowadays though, Nintendo hands out the adorable little psychic cat a lot more readily, and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are no exception. You can claim the mythical Mew and Jirachi by simply having save data from Pokemon Sword, Shield, and Pokemon Let's Go. Sword and Shield will grant you Jirachi, while Let's Go save data will give you Mew. You can access both of them fairly early, though not right at the beginning. Once you reach Floroma Town though, you will see an elderly couple standing together in a field of flowers to the left of the entrance. Talk to each of them to receive your two free legendary Pokemon. The core goal of Pokemon besides being the best there ever was is to catch him, which is your real test. <clears throat> Uh, to help you achieve this goal are the Pokeballs, usually lowering a Pokemon's health to the red bar and adding a status effect like Paralysis will help boost your chance of a Pokeball successfully capturing a wild Pokemon. The problem is that as the game progresses, the type of Pokemon you encounter will be at higher levels and are more prone to breaking out of Pokeballs. Thankfully, you'll have the opportunity to buy different Pokeballs later in the game as well. Great Balls are a good start and are the next level beyond Pokeballs, but Ultra Balls are the bread and butter and will double the success rate of a standard Pokeball. There are also Dusk Balls, which will grant a times two success capture rate bonus for being in caves and another times two bonus if the battle also takes place at night. Timer Balls will be more successful the longer a battle goes on. And there are even Quick Balls, which are my personal favorite. Seriously, stock up on Quick Balls. It makes catching for your Pokédex less of a chore, and it works really well a good portion of the time, so long as you throw the ball right away, and your party gets XP if you catch a Pokémon too. It's a win-win. The Pokétch is your all-purpose Sinnoh smart device, complete with functions you'll never use like a calculator. But it's also your shortcut key to hidden machines, or HMs, and their functions. Most of those will trigger automatically when you come to a tree branch that can be cut or a body of water that can be surfed. And the fly function will automatically trigger when you use your map, indicating a town that you'd like to travel to as long as you've been there before. Since other functions like the pedometer aren't super useful unless if you're trying to hatch some eggs, you may just want to hold R to dismiss the Poketch rather than have a giant block taking up your screen. At some point during your adventure, chances are you'll need to buff your Pokemon. You could roam around the tall grass for a while, but after a few minutes you'll probably have battled and caught just about everything you can from there. Instead, consider visiting the Grand Underground. It opens up once you've reached Eterna City and spoken to the Underground Man in the house next to the Pokemon Center. And after that point, you can drop down anytime by using the Explorer Kit. The Pokemon in the Grand Underground will consistently keep approximate pace with your level, making them appropriate for grinding. Better yet, the Grand Underground is chock full of Pokemon you can't find anywhere else, so it's super helpful if you're looking for a rare find or you just want to catch them all. Speaking of grinding XP, when wandering this world you'll often find trainers itching to do battle with you. 
While you can feel free to go around them, if you're in need of healing or you just want to move on, don't skip them too often. Battling other trainers nets you more experience than wild Pokemon battles, and the game is generally balanced assuming you'll be engaging with all or at least most of the trainers scattered around the world. If you skip too many though, you might be underleveled and you'll just have to go back and battle them anyway. Through most of Pokemon history, experience share has been a toggle and usually only applied to one Pokemon. In Sword and Shield, and now in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, it is on by default, can't be turned off, and it impacts your whole party. So even if you're using one Pokemon as your main, be sure to bring party members along who could benefit from getting the extra experience. One good early game example is Magikarp, which you can catch relatively early with a fishing pole like an old rod. But Magikarp by itself is useless, which usually meant it was hard or tedious to level it up. The experience share in Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl will let you passively grind it up to level 20, at which point it becomes the much more powerful Gyarados. My recommendation is to keep your starter or a Pokemon you know that will be with you for the long haul in your party at all times, but cycle out the last couple of slots in your party for Pokemon that you can level up passively since getting them to evolve also gets you closer to your ultimate goal of completing your Pokédex. It's a two birds one stone type situation. Pokemon is known for many things, but quick, snappy battles is not one of them. If you want to make your battles just a little bit quicker, you can toggle some of the settings in the options menu. You can turn off battle animations and the prompt to nickname your newly caught Pokemon, as well as adjust the text speed if you want things to move along a little faster. You can also toggle off the prompt to change Pokemon when your opponent switches, which is also a time saver, but it could put you at a strategic disadvantage for type matchups. And speaking of type matchups... When you go to switch your Pokemon mid-battle, you'll see their moves listed along the right side. This can be vitally helpful because if you've encountered a Pokemon before, and you had them added to your Pokedex, this menu will list the effectiveness of each move against your current opponent Pokemon, and this can be handy for planning out your next move. A few times throughout Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, you'll get temporarily partnered up with an NPC. This happens early in the woods, for example, in Eterna Forest, when you're partnered with a friend who will help keep your Pokemon healthy. Take advantage of this by grinding a little extra in the area, since having that access to constant healing means you won't have to venture back to town to stay healthy. Like some later Pokemon games, you can select one special little monster to follow you around in the overworld. Just visit Amity Park in Hearthrome to unlock this function, and then swap your following Pokemon by selecting Walk Together after selecting a Pokemon in your party. You can talk to your Pokemon from time to time, and sometimes it might have even found random low-level items. It also gives it a slight passive boost in combat, and once your bond is strong enough, you'll see prompts in combat noting that it might have dodged an attack or even kept from feigning simply due to its friendship with you. In the original Diamond and Pearl, as well as most early Pokemon games, you had to venture back to town and visit a Pokemon Center to use a PC that would let you swap your current party with your batch of stored Pokemon. Now it's much simpler because you can simply access the PC box and swap them out anytime from anywhere. That means if you're out wandering the wilderness or the Grand Underground and you want to level up a different set of monsters, it is easy to simply switch them out and keep playing without the time spent going back to town. The held items mechanic lets you give your Pokemon passive buffs or emergency healing opportunities. While those are great for battle, even holding an item that doesn't have utility in battle will still help it become happier. What's more, some Pokemon only evolve by holding items, so it's best to keep your party fully stocked with items regardless. Also use an amulet coin. You'll eventually stumble upon an amulet coin in Hearthroom City's Amity Square. Having a Pokemon hold an amulet coin will double the amount of money you get at the end of each trainer battle. This cash will stock up quick and will go a long way in making sure you're well stocked on healing items like different potions, Pokeballs, repels, and more luxury items like high-end TMs or even stylish outfits later in the mid-game. Now this last one is a little extra tip for me that might not matter too much to beginners, but it is a good thing to pay attention to. Introduced in Gen 3, every Pokemon now has a personality trait known as nature, which can directly impact its stats. Some natures are completely neutral, but others will give a 10% bonus to one stat and a 10% reduction to another. The way that you check this is by checking your Pokemon summary 
and noting which of its stats are marked in red and which are blue. Red means you get a 10% buff, and blue means you're getting a 10% reduction. The idea is to land a Pokemon with a nature boosting its most powerful stat and reducing a stat that it doesn't use often anyway. You don't have to cherry pick every Pokemon you catch until you get the perfect nature, but for example, getting a Magikarp to evolve into a Gyarados with an adamant nature will go a long way compared to a Gyarados with a modest nature. Pokemon is one of my favorite franchises, and I've sunk thousands of hours since I was a kid, so believe me when I say that we've barely scratched the surface. If there's a guide that you would like to see an explainer on, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Until next time.